Since its inception, MTN Group, Africa's leading telecommunications operator, has built a unique legacy, connecting people, driving economic growth, and transforming lives across South Africa and the African continent. Today, MTN serves more than 288 million customers across 18 markets, and in 2023, its fintech transactions topped $272 billion. What might the next 30 years look like? I had an opportunity to ask Group CEO Ralph and Peter that question and many more. We started uh, uh, our first call on the 1st of June 1994 after uh, you know, securing the license in September 1993. Um, we had a business plan then uh, where we thought the case uh, was that you know, over the next five years, there'll be 300,000 subscribers on the MTN network. Two thirds of them, 200,000, would be businesses. And we said, there's very limited opportunity for individuals. And in fact, the individual market was seen as people who had car phones. So that was the market assessment then. Uh, but fast forward, five years later, that 300,000 was 2 million in South Africa. <laughs> So that business case was, uh, um, you know, was, uh, didn't really capture the market opportunity. Um, and you know, MTN started as a story in South Africa um, and by 1997 started to expand its wings, uh, moved to firstly Rwanda. Rwanda is our firstborn child. Uh, and then we went to uh, Uganda pretty much the same time and Eswatini. Uh, and then, you know, the expansion into Nigeria, 2001, and then the rest is history. So um, it's been a journey uh, that has been amazing uh, in seeing us from, you know, this company that now has 288 million subscribers. So to your question about the impact, I think uh, telecommunications more generally has transformed um, the global south. If we think about where we came from the early 90s, you know, teledensity, the number of people who have a fixed line uh, in most African markets was very low. I mean, uh, Zimbabwe was 1.2 um, uh, telephone lines for 100 people. South Africa was 8.9. Most African markets were like 0. Point something. <laughs> so what telecommunications, while it's, re it's, it's been a real revolution uh, in, in its ability to connect people to the internet and uh, give them all the benefits of the internet, and what we've also been able to do as MTN is leverage um, the capabilities, skills, and brand that we had yeah. to launch Mobile Money in 2009. And we now have 288 million subscribers using our network regularly, yeah. and we have 63 million people using Mobile Money. So the socioeconomic impact has been significant. We are, in most markets, uh, XSA, the largest taxpayer, yeah. uh, one of the biggest employers, um, and uh, we're number one or number two in our market. So the socioeconomic, um, you know, um, benefits, uh, we would like to believe that MTN has delivered in, in the various host markets, yeah. you know, has been significant. Yeah. People, experts talk about uh, telecommunications now as uh, the new infrastructure. In the past, we spoke about roads, railways, yeah. but now people are talking about telecommunications as that other backbone that an economy needs. Just talk a little bit about uh, how you see that and how you see the role of MTN. Yeah, if you think about it today, everything is connected to data networks. Um, I mean, we think of ourselves as building base stations, fiberizing the networks, connecting people, connecting businesses. But if you step back from it, um, you know, um, wireless communication has become critical national infrastructure. Um, you know, every bank, is having transactions flowing through our network. Hospitals depend uh, on networks being uh, on schools. Just general society is underpinned by wireless telecommunication. And now the line between wireless and uh, fixed is blurring as we move into this 5G era. Uh, we're seeing a, a bit more of that bl uh, blurring. But, you know, it is the new uh, and most important form of critical infrastructure. I mean, roads, rail, airports, ports, etc., yeah. still have a role to play. Uh, you know, no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. But what is really transforming societies, and again, I come back to the point about societies in the global south, like in our markets, is the role of the digital economy 
uh, you know, to drive, uh, you know, uh, you know socioeconomic growth. So, you know, it's a very interesting form of infrastructure yeah. uh, that is almost a public good, but provided by private capital. Yeah. Um, there's very little that looks like that anywhere in the world. So, um, in today's world where the digital economy is powering growth, um, you know, wireless networks, uh, fixed networks, you know, are the bedrock uh, of any society. Yeah, and it's not a journey you've made alone, right? You've had stakeholders along the way, right. partnerships that have been critical in the growth of the company. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about their impact and who they are. No, I mean, um, in, in the, the success and progress of MTN over the last 30 years, I mean, there's a broad stakeholder group. Um, I mean, the customers are the most important. If you think about, you know, these people trust us to, uh, um, you know, to be reliably uh, uh, connected onto networks. Um, and we've built, as I said, the base of 288 million to date across our 18 markets. Um, the regulators in the markets who create the regulatory frameworks that enable us to operate, uh, you know, these are, have been critical. The host nations, uh, every country we operate has an ambition around its own strategy, where they want to take uh, their people to. We try and align ourselves with that. Um, and so they've been critical in enabling us to grow uh, and to do everything we do, to invest in the networks um, and uh, to be able to repatriate dividends and all of those good things. Um, you know, um, and in most markets, actually, we've gone in with partners. Yeah. We have gone into new markets and found locals to partner with. And I think that's probably been the most unique thing about MTN. We have not wanted to go into a market without local partners. Um, our staff, um, I think one of the things that makes MTN unique is we're a truly Pan-African organization. Sure. We have 70 nationalities in this company, oh, wow. 70 nationalities. And I, and I take a lot of pride when I look at my executive committee as an example. You have a Senegalese there, you have Nigerians, you have Ghanaians, South Africans, Lebanese, you name them. And I think that's part of the what I call the yellow magic, sure. which is this diversity. So our staff has been uh, very important uh, our stakeholders as well. And, you know, um, you know, finally, and probably it goes without saying, um, it's just, you know, governments more generally, particularly the ministries that, uh, you know, oversee us be beyond the regulators, ministries of finance, competition authorities. Without that whole uh, setup of stakeholders, I don't think MTN, we, would we wouldn't have made this progress. Yeah. And 30 years of building the largest African telecommunications company. I want to talk about what the next 30 years or what uh, the MTN group of the future looks like. Yeah, look, we rest on the shoulders of giants, many uh, MTN as uh, CEOs and their teams and boards, et cetera, before my time. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's always a little bit easier when somebody has done the hard work. Uh, not that the hard work has ended, but, but, um, but as we look forward, um, we're excited about the future, Agathe. When we see uh, the demand for data and internet services, and what the internet can bring to drive socioeconomic progress. So we still see waves on waves of data growth. Um, the big wave we see now is consumer. We think enterprise is the next. Uh, 5G in our minds is a big uh, industrial application yeah. uh, for business, smart cities, safe cities, ports, logistics, mining, safe mining. So there's another wave of growth on the enterprise side that we're seeing. And I think we're just beginning. Fintech, I think we're only beginning right now. We are very far from saying the job is yet done to include more Africans. We're going to play in infrastructure, um, but in a partnership model. So the, you know, the infrastructure, particular fiber, uh, and to some extent data centers, uh, more and more needs to get built. Yeah. And there's a role for us to play there. So, I mean, the next 30 years of MTN, I think, you know, we are going to be, you know, pursuing the next, uh, you know, uh, waves of generation and growth. We've gone through 4G to 5G, yeah. 6G will come, yeah. which is really going to be about always being connected, yeah. uh, where you leverage, um, you know, satellites, uh, terrestrial networks, yeah. undersea cables to ensure that you're always on. Are you talking about me in my rural home? You, in your rural home, you'll have a high speed connection. That time is coming and it's going to be affordable. And we'll be balancing terrestrial networks with, um, uh, with LEO satellites. When you go to your rural area, your home that you love so dearly, yeah. uh, you, you'll be connected.
but it will be the combination of all these forms of technology that create this uh, I'm always on, yeah. this ubiquitous, always connected yeah. uh, with a good quality connection. Uh, that time is coming and you know that's the next decade or so. It sounds like a lot of money that needs to be invested. Money for sure is going to uh, come into it and that's why I keep referring to partnership capital. Right. Part of the future of MTN is we're not going to do everything alone. Uh, we need to be smart about how we partner. Uh, you've seen us now thinking about the fintech business to say we're not going to do everything. We're going to partner with the likes of MasterCard uh, on uh, payments uh, in particular uh, and also thinking about remittance. We're going to partner in insurance with a company like Sunlam and so forth. So a lot of capital is going to be required, but we need to think smartly about how we crowd in other people's capital yeah. um, uh, aside our capital. We, we don't have the balance sheet and the most MNOs won't have the balance sheet yeah. to fund all of that. So smart partnerships are going to be the real deal uh, going forward. And that's uh, something that we know we need to do. And we are readying ourselves for that, you know, as we look at the next decade. You're reminding me of uh, what the banks of the past were. I think I remember you talked the asset management, you talked the insurance, and then you talked obviously the commercial banking and uh, uh, those type of things. And then we heard about the fact that, no, the banks wanted to divest a little bit because their pie was being eaten by the telecommunications uh, company. That space for telecommunications companies in terms of integrating banking, telecommunications, and all these other things that you guys are able to do. Would there be a company like that in the future that looks like MTN? I like to say that we don't compete with banks, and uh, you know most banks uh, uh, agree with me, but some, uh, sometimes we don't. What we're trying to do is, I think about what we're doing as financial inclusion. We're including those who've been left out, uh, you, know, um, you know, because they, they, they are quite limited in uh, their financial resources. So, um, you know, Godfrey, I would love for you to be a customer of ours uh, in our mobile money fintech business, but you're not the traditional customer because you're well banked and uh, well served. So where we're going is where people are underserved. And that's why we think of what we're doing in fintech as financial inclusion. It's we go and we talk to that customer who can spend, uh, or, you know, a dollar, you know, maybe $2.50 maximum on financial services a month. That's the customer we're after. So, you know, Traditional banks and insurance companies do not get to those customers. They will not make an economic return because of the infrastructure they need to build. But what we've been able to do is leverage uh, our capability, our distribution, uh, the technology that we have to get to those customers. For sure, over the next five to 10 years, what you're going to see is a much more appified experience of, um, of our fintech business. Uh, so it will start looking a bit like banking. Sure. But that customer that we're dealing with, uh, they, their needs are quite different from ours. And, and we see that mostly when we're outside of South Africa, when we look at across our markets. Um, so we, we, we're not trying to compete with banks. Um, I don't think banks are also trying to become telecommunications operators because they, they then have to put in this enormous capex that we put into the ground. So the smart thing in the future is partnerships, you know, is, is to find win-win partnerships uh, between so compete and cooperate over time, I think is going to become the norm is in one minute you're talking to somebody competitively, yeah. uh, in another moment you're looking to collaborate. Smart partnerships of the future. Smart partnerships of the future. Ralph, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you.